On this channel, I enjoy breaking down professional athletes' finances, and occasionally I'll discuss why a specific athlete went broke after earning millions. David Dobrik won't be going broke, but he's definitely taken a big hit financially with the recent spiral his brand is going through right now. David is one of the biggest YouTubers with over 18 million subscribers on his main channel and 8.5 million on his second channel. In this video, we'll take a look at how much money the top YouTubers can make by analyzing David's income sources, which will also give us an idea on how much money he's missing out on with his sponsors removing themselves from their partnership. David has had one of the cleanest brand images on YouTube and seemed to be the one creator who couldn't get canceled. His videos generally had a positive message, were entertaining to watch, and oftentimes involved giving away cars to his friends. Issues that fans weren't aware of started coming to light. First, it was Big Nick, an early member of the Vlog Squad, speaking about his past experience with the Vlog Squad and how his appearances only existed for him to receive jokes at his expense. Next was Seth, speaking about his experience in a bit where he thought he was kissing Corinna, but was in fact kissing Jason, a 40 year old dad. The allegations against Dirty Dom were next and most alarming due to the nature of the case and because of Dom's prominence in the group. With Jeff Wittick's documentary coming out this week explaining how he nearly lost his life due to being the character in a very dangerous bit, all of the heat has been on David for being the director controlling this operation. David's sponsors have made public statements about cutting ties with his brand and a likelihood of never working with him again. SeatGeek, HelloFresh, EA Sports, Chipotle, just to name a few, have all moved on from his brand. In addition to his long list of sponsors, David stepped down from Dispo, an app that was experiencing major growth and popularity immediately before this downward spiral. We'll discuss the financial ramifications of the sponsors backing out and him losing his equity in Dispo in just a minute, it, but creators are always at the mercy of their sponsor's best wishes. Most companies don't want any association with another brand that could have financial risk for their brand image. I think Nike sticking with Tiger Woods is the last big brand to stay by the side of an entertainer or athlete while their brand was getting ripped to shreds in the media. With that said, let's talk numbers. David still averages around 85 million views per month for his YouTube videos despite not releasing any videos. At my average RPM rate of $8, if I received the number of views David did each month, I would earn $680,000 each month from AdSense alone. Let's see how much David earns. So, I mean, I can tell you like my paycheck right now on YouTube is under what? Oh my God, it's not a big deal. It's under 800 bucks, which is, which is, which is very low. Only $800 a month from AdSense alone. This isn't surprising since his content is very similar to other channels who are demonetized. All of his videos contain copyrighted music, so there's no way he'll be able to monetize from the ads that run on his channel. All of that money goes to YouTube and the original copyright owner. That's if ads run at all. This is the challenging aspect of a lot of creators on YouTube. You make content that YouTube considers inappropriate for, whatever reason and your videos can get demonetized. If you use another person's song and the video gets a copyright claim, then you lose 100% of the ad revenue. It seems more fair that an even split should occur, but that's not the case. So David doesn't make any money from AdSense. How is he able to pay for his friend's cars? I know this may seem obvious to many, but most of your friends probably don't know how creators make money on YouTube. AdSense is the obvious one. YouTube places ads on the videos and you get a certain amount per 1,000 views. With enough views of the ads, you can earn a full-time living. But sponsorships is where the real money was earned for David. I was influenced by Colin and Samir's video titled Why David Dobrik Gives Away Teslas in making this video, and the content of that video certainly helped make this video. But initially, like most brands, Ian and SeatGeek were looking for a more traditional Additional marketing campaign. David, however, had other plans. We knew David wanted to go to the World Series and surprised his best friend. David Dobrik and SeatGeek is probably the most well-known brand relationship on YouTube and became synonymous with David giving away cars. David, thank you so much. This is so nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but more importantly, thank you, SeatGeek. <laughs> Fans knew that whenever David started reading the ad for SeatGeek in his video that one of his friends was about to receive a new car. And the video just crushed both from a view wise, but more importantly for us, for me to prove it, a conversion wise. We had a ton of new SeatGeek purchasers. When a creator can implement a sponsorship read successfully in their content and make it engaging, then it's likely that the company sponsoring the video will see a huge uptick in new customers or sales like SeatGeek experienced with David. Creators will generally have a specific code for users to use at checkout so that the brand can analyze how many customers are being sent to their product or service from the creator. An example would be, go to this website and use the code SPENCER for 15% off. I wanted to maybe get myself a Ferrari and I wanted to see if you guys could help. Okay, how much, uh, 
I'll pay for half. I'll pay for half. Okay, I can get you the other half. <gasps> What's up guys, the next part of the video is brought to you by CP. <laughs> Most importantly, how much money are we talking here? When a brand and creator form a good working relationship where the creator is getting paid well and the brand hits certain KPIs, then the company will be willing to pay well to sponsor videos. In the clip I just shared, David was able to get enough money from SeatGeek to pay for half of a brand new Ferrari. Let's estimate a new Ferrari is 350,000, then that little segment of his video made him roughly $175,000. To the people who don't understand the creator economy, Economy, that might sound absurd. David includes a read for buying tickets on SeatGeek and he's able to buy a Ferrari? It doesn't sound so ridiculous when you consider the numbers. The 2019 NBA Finals between two large market teams, Bay Area and Toronto, averaged 13 to 18 million viewers each game. David's vlogs routinely cross over 18 million views and can receive as many as 20 to 30 million views. What would an advertiser be willing to pay to have their brand as the only sponsor of an NBA Finals game? It's similar viewing numbers, but here's the kicker. David has a much more targeted audience as YouTube analytics can show the type of viewer that watches his content. And think about television ads. How many people have the NBA game on the TV but can't hear the ad? aren't watching the ad, or have the TV on and just simply aren't paying attention. Advertisers are paying for those eyeballs. With David's content, all 20 million eyeballs are watching while the ad gets read. That is insane value for a brand. Because of the attention and access to demographic data, how much do you think advertisers would be willing to pay to have 10 million to 20 million people watch their ad? SeatGeek is willing to pay at least 175,000. And how does it make economic sense? For this part of the video, we've decided to use ourselves as an example. So let's just say there's this world where you want to work with us. Where would you price us right now? And I typically start at a $20 CPM. I would pay you somewhere between, my, my floor would be $2,000 for a 30 second spot. So $20 is the CPM, or the cost that he'll pay for every thousand views that we deliver on this video. Ian from SeatGeek was willing to pay David $20 for every 1,000 views. Let's estimate a video receives 10 million views. If you look at the views his content was receiving, 10 million is super conservative as he's generally reaching 20 to 30 million views. 10 million divided by 1,000 will give us 10,000 units. 10,000 times the CPM rate of $20 will give us $200,000. Pretty close to the estimated 175,000 for the Ferrari purchase. David was making 12 videos per month at his peak. Let's estimate eight of them had a sponsored read like the SeatGeek videos or an obvious sponsor in the video. That's probably $1.6 million on the low end in major sponsors. My guess is his videos also had secondary sponsors at times. This is just a guess as I have no knowledge on this. I wouldn't be surprised if he had sponsorships with brands that appeared in his videos as a non-sponsored read, but they still were prominent enough to get the viewers attention. In this video, he has an obvious sponsor in Chipotle as they gave the homeless guy a year's worth of burritos, but he also gave away a Chrysler. There isn't mention of Chrysler being a sponsor, but I would not be surprised if he was able to negotiate with them to receive the car in cash. That video could have two sponsors. I hope you're starting to see how much money can be made when you have a large following. $2 million a month for sponsors on his YouTube videos is probably a conservative estimate. And those are gone, so we can add roughly 20 to $25 million per year in lost YouTube sponsors. Turn around. Yo, tell me the top of her head does not fucking look like this shit. <laughs> Let's look at TikTok. In this video, David has a Subway sandwich as the integral part of the bit. It's a short clip, but it has 1.6 million likes and 9.8 million views. Given what I just explained with the YouTube sponsors, how much do you think he can earn from Subway on this TikTok video? If you're Subway and you know 9.8 million people are directly viewing your product by a creator, who at the time was loved and as brand safe as anyone, how much would you pay? It's not crazy to think he can earn maybe $100,000 per sponsor video on TikTok. Oh my God. Okay. Bye, Eli. Oh! This video has 8 million views and is a sponsored ad with a link to Frank's hot sauce TikTok page. I would not be surprised if Frank's paid $250,000 for this post. Let's assume that David was doing one sponsored post per month and would continue at that pace. Let's estimate that he could earn as high as $250,000 for a sponsored post on TikTok. That's $3 million per year just from TikTok. Between YouTube and TikTok, I'd estimate he is missing out on $25 million per year from sponsors. David entered into the app space by founding Dispo, an app that would rival Instagram and mimic the experience of using a disposable camera. In a seed funding round in October led by Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian's firm 776, 
Dispo raised $4 million. This week, the company raised $20 million at a $200 million valuation in a Series A funding round led by Spark Capital, according to Axios. We don't know how much ownership David had, but given that he was the founder and was promoting the app all over his social media, I would not be surprised if he had at least a 50% equity share in the app. Late on Sunday, Mr. Dobrik announced that he would leave the company and step down from the board of Dispo in order to not distract from the company's growth. Hours before, the venture capital firm Spark Capital, which led the startup's $20 million Series A financing round in February, announced it would sever all ties with Dispo. We have stepped down from our position on the board, and we are in the process of making arrangements to ensure we do not profit from our recent investment in Dispo, the company posted on Twitter. With the venture capital firms looking to exit their investment into Dispo and David stepping down, I think we can consider conservatively estimate that David's on-paper equity from Dispo alone was worth $100 million. Would the app ever exit and David earn the big payday? No one knows. But this incident removed the opportunity of him earning the big payday. Given his prominence on social media and his ability to garner new users from a simple post, I don't think it's crazy to think that Dispo had the ability to become a legitimate multiple nine-figure company. His losses in Dispo are more opportunity cost than actual loss, but I think there was potential for a a $100 million exit after future rounds of funding, his equity split dispersion, and the company being purchased. What's up guys, welcome to the end of the video. Jason and I have some big news. We started our own podcast, it's called Views. I'm gonna link in the description, please go check it out. On May 18th, 2017, David debuted a podcast with his co-host and vlog squad partner, Jason Nash, called Views. They have been consistently releasing the podcast ever since then. Just a couple months ago, they began posting the Views podcast on a separate YouTube channel. The channel has almost reached 1.7 million subscribers with only five episodes and six uploads. The majority of the views for the podcast were on Spotify as it was was an audio only podcast until recently. Let's estimate David does three ad reads throughout each episode, and let's estimate 10 million downloads per episode between YouTube and Spotify and every other platform. Based on the numbers I've shared, I think $250,000 an episode for the sponsored ads is entirely possible. If they upload once a week, four times a month, then that's a $1 million per month podcast. $1 billion a month would be $12 million per year. What other podcast could reach 10 million downloads per episode? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's deal with Spotify was worth $100 million. It's not crazy to think that David's podcast could easily be worth $50 million or more for a three to five year deal with no more sponsors the money is gone. Logan Paul's podcast Impulsive went without sponsors for years after his infamous fallout following the Japan forest incident. It's only recently that he's found sponsors for the podcast. I wouldn't be surprised if David experiences something similar. Whenever David wants to make a comeback, he's gonna have his podcast for as long as he wants. The studio set is in his house, but I don't think he's gonna be able to land any sponsors anytime soon. He could be missing out on a huge nine-figure payday from the loss in sponsors for the Views podcast. David had become part owner of a team in a new women's professional soccer league, the Angel City Football Club, set to begin playing next year. There are no available numbers with this venture, but it's yet another loss for David. I don't know how it works with being forced out of an investment venture like this. Does he keep his original investment? Does he keep an equity split for publicly stepping down? I'm not able to provide any numbers, but he did have ownership in a professional soccer team. That has to be a reasonable amount of money. The point of this video is to show you how creators can make their money and how damaging it could be financially for a creator to experience a brand hit. We've seen athletes go through brand separation, guys like Tiger Woods back in 2010 come to mind, but now we're seeing it rather common in the creator community. I hope you were able to learn about the creator economy in this video. A lot of people I meet are still confused as to how YouTubers make their money, so hopefully you can send this video to them so they can see all the ways to turn a platform into an empire. I never root for someone's failure, but David made some questionable decisions and is now facing the repercussions. My guess is he won't return to making vlogs for YouTube like he was. He will go through a transitionary period like Logan Paul did and will take some time to gain people's trust back. His content will be more mature when he returns. Whenever you have the following that he does, he will always have opportunities to make money so he won't be going broke even though the losses from this fallout are quite staggering. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. Being a creator is challenging, but the numbers you saw in this video are the upside if you ever make it big. It's a lucrative career. Just don't do anything stupid because the fallout is very public. Thanks for watching.